It's a Conspiracy is a proud member of the Alberta Podcast Network powered by ATB. For a list of other fun programming, please check out the Alberta Podcast Network.com where you can find shows like Healthy Lifestyle Design. So uh, welcome back everyone to It's a Conspiracy. This is the podcast where we lay out the beliefs behind selected conspiracy theories, alternative accounts, legends, myths, and more. I'm going to try to turn my phone off while I'm talking. Oh, that's good content. There we go. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. (laughs) Uh, I'm your host, Andrew, and this is our Hanukkah special. Yay. 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 I didn't realize we were cheering at that part. Yeah. Uh, So really quick before we get started. Uh, if you'd like to see where we dug up uh, whatever we're going to discuss today, then please check out the resources in the episode description. Charlie, our good friend, spends hours and hours on that, and we can show him how much we appreciate all of this That's hard work. That's right. Isn't that right? Yeah. Uh, also, we are a proud member of the Alberta Podcast Network, powered by ATB. It's a good group of pals, and we are glad to be part of the family. If you would like to keep up to date uh, on what we are up to here at It's a Conspiracy, then please check out our website, It's a Conspiracy Podcast.com where you can find links to our Twitter, that's run by the Irish Madman, our Facebook group, the Instagram, that's run by Greg, uh, our email, and our Patreon page, patreon.com slash it's a conspiracy. Now, joining the chinwag today is gorgeous Greg, charming Charlie, hey. and our friend Paula. So these uh, these three daffodils will be presented with some selected theories and interject as they see fit. Uh, thanks for coming, Paula. It's really nice to see you again and uh, it's been a little while. We were talking yeah. about this before we got started, but well, it's great to see you, Andrew. Yeah, I'm I'm glad you're able to make it down. And we, so you're you're in Edmonton. I don't. You tell us about yourself a little bit. I'm a, I'm a freelance writer and okay. editor and photographer. I'm also a musician, and uh, I am also a member of uh, Edmonton's Jewish community. That's very cool. And you're gonna you're gonna teach us about Hanukkah today. I am going to teach you about Hanukkah <laughs> or Hanukkah, as I call it. Hanukkah, yeah. Hanukkah. We. We've been working on pronunciation, but it's been... Uh, yeah. It's all good. It, we'll, we'll, yeah. yeah. If, if there's one thing we get right, it's it's uh, pronunciation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and accents. And accents. Yeah, and accents. Those are your <laughs> two uh, strong points. Uh, so we're going to talk about um, a brief history of Hanukkah. Did I say it right that time? Pretty good. Okay. That's okay. pretty good. You're getting better already. <laughs> and, uh, and then number two, the origin of the Vulcan salute. And then we have ourselves a little snack time. So uh, I know oh, the good. guys are always oh, I'm big excited. fans of snack time. Greg is looking a little green today, so I'm extra <laughs> excited for this. I woke up like 10 minutes before I got here. Oh. I'm so sorry. <laughs> You're a party animal, man. Uh, okay, cool. Well, I guess let's try a brief history of Hanukkah. Okay, so you want me to just kind of start at the very, very beginning? Sure, sure. Okay, well, um, first of all, the thing about Hanukkah is like a lot of people call it the Jewish Christmas. That's referred to as the Jewish Christmas, which is really incorrect because Hanukkah actually has nothing to do with Christmas at all, except that it happens to fall around the same time of the year, and it also involves giving gifts. Um, and the, the actual story of Hanukkah, the, the history of it, is not in the Bible itself. It's in two books in the Apocrypha called Maccabees. And the summary is basically that there was this guy named Antiochus IV, also known as Epiphanes, who was a tyrant, and he attempted to impose Hellenistic customs on the Jewish people. So basically that meant that they were forbidden to practice their own religious traditions. And in fact, were forced to do things that were contrary to Jewish law, like being forced to eat pork or eat eat swine's flesh, which is something that we don't do. Jewish mothers who had their male babies circumcised were executed, as were the babies themselves. So things were really, really rough for the Jewish people. You just could not openly be Jewish or, or practice the faith. Another thing that Antiochus did was the temple in Jerusalem. He desecrated it. Um, he pillaged it. He re- redesignated it uh, as a temple of, of Zeus. So it basically it became offering pagan sacrifices on the sacred altar there in, in the temple. And be, it was at that point that these acts of sacrilege in the temple re- resulted in Jewish, the Jewish people successfully rising up against him in what is known as the Maccabean Revolt. So the Jewish people reclaimed the temple and they set about rededicating it, but they found that they had only enough ritually pure oil to keep the temple candle lit for one single day. But there was a miracle and the candle burned for eight days until a fresh supply of purified oil could be prepared. So 
in in as a summary, Hanukkah is about a miracle and it's about the triumph of good over evil and of darkness over light. That's really cool. Yeah. Is that um, am I assuming I I don't know anything about this at all? Like this is all brand new information for me. And is that why the the kind of candle is like the symbol of what it is? Well, there there cause of that there there are a number of customs and symbols that have become to be associated with Hanukkah. For example, the the holiday lasts eight days right. because at the time that the the oil lasted, and on each night of the holiday there is a candle lit on a special candelabra called a menorah. And it has eight sections for candles and then a, another section for a candle in the middle that's used to light each of the candles. So each day, like, the candles are one by one lit until on the eighth day, they're all lit up and small gifts are given each night. And there's a lot of... Uh, oily food that's consumed oh, nice. so that's right because it's all about that, about that oil lasting so we get things like like um deep fried potato pancakes for example oh, or things like like jelly donuts things that are just really healthy and mm. and yeah. uh just keep talking yeah. about that yeah, some, <laughs> i could go for some latkes right now yeah it. yeah so um, there's also a uh, um, a gambling game that's played for chocolate coins using a four-sided spinning top called a dreidel. And on each side of the dreidel, there's a Hebrew letter on it that is an acronym for uh, a great miracle happened here. It's, uh, so, again, something that's come into tradition. It's like about fun and games and, and, and celebrating, I guess, the triumph of the, of the Jewish people of, against uh, ethnocide. Yeah. Which has happened more than one time in, in, in our history. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. I didn't realize it was such a I, I, like it had this like traumatic beginning. Like it that that sounds awful. Oof. But yeah. So well, well, it's like most Jewish holidays. It's like you know they they tried to kill us. We won. Let's eat. <laughs> <laughs> what better way to celebrate? No, that's a good. Yeah. Actually, that that's a nice. I, I like that that mentality. Or yeah, that's really cool. So did you did you grow up? celebrating a little kid and doing oh yeah definitely i mean it was always a lot of fun for kids because you got presents and yeah and especially at at that time of the year when everybody else is getting ready for christmas and and presents and everything you know it it was uh our chance to get presents and i guess that's how a little kid looks at it but it was fun too you know (laughs) playing with the dreidels and light lighting the candles and 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 singing songs and it's uh, especially when the menorah is all lit up on the eighth day it's a real striking visual image that uh really stays with you yeah, that was the candle that I was referring to, and that's the, the menorah is the name of the. That's the candle. With that's the, the candelabra. The, the candelabra yeah, with the nine. Yeah, with the nine. Yeah. This seems like a ridiculous question, and you have to forgive my ignorance on the subject. But it's like, it seems to me like uh, Hanukkah has a different. It lands in a different place every year. Like uh, it'll. It's. I'm not comparing it to Easter, but it's like. Uh, it's not like December 25th, like it seems to... That's correct. And, and and actually, most of the Jewish holidays are like that as well, because we follow a lunar calendar with some adjustments made to make, just to ensure that the holidays fall out at, a, at the same time of year. Right. Um, but uh, that's the reason why it comes out at a different... It comes out on a um, on the uh, Jewish calendar. It starts on the 25th of the month of Kislev, and then the final candle is lit on the 2nd of Tevet. Oh man, Kislev is and T- Tevet are the months like there are different months and and it goes according to, like to a lunar calendar. Like I said, with some adjustments just to ensure that it doesn't end up falling out in spring. <laughs> right, if right. you follow a lunar calendar by itself, eventually you lose a couple uh, of months here, a couple and there, of months right? here and there. Eventually, yeah. and uh, so that's why and the, and and the other Jewish holidays fall out on on different English days um, each year as well for the same reason. Yeah. That's I. That, this it's funny that like we grow up in in the same culture and it's just like for some reason that we you you get showered in in Christmas stuff from like Remembrance Day or even Halloween onwards and I you rarely see anything about this and yet it's just such a fascinating history. Yeah, that's true. And it, it, I mean, I guess it's just part of you know being a minority um, um, amongst the majority culture, right? So unless you're you're part of that or you know people who are a part of that or you've taken religious studies classes or you really wouldn't know you really wouldn't know about it too much because in yeah in uh, North America it's certainly unless unless you're in New York or Montreal or places like that where there's a larger Jewish population it's not something that's really in our cultural consciousness I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I mentioned that there are songs that are sung at for Hanukkah and uh, there's a song that uh, is is very traditionally sung. Uh, f- for that 
celebration, and it was sung in in, in my house growing up as well. It's called Ma Otsur. Uh, in English, it's Rock of Ages, but it's not the same Rock of Ages that many of our listeners are probably right. familiar with. Um, and I'm going to sing it uh, bilingually in Hebrew and in English. And I have Ooh. to say, I'm not I'm not a Hebrew speaker, so I apologize in advance to anyone listening who knows Hebrew if I if I mess anything up. But uh, here we go. No one. So I don't know. I have to be careful. Maybe Greg wants to go on the couch. That's yeah, not going to hit him with the way. guitar. Put my, my, Seems my. like a nice guy. I don't want to hit him. Sure. Well, yeah. Seems yeah. like a nice person, too. So. Go, go ahead and hit him. He's... <laughs> <laughs> See, Andrew's, Andrew's the real tyrant here. <laughs> okay, so yeah. that's yellow. Yeah, I forgot to warn you. Like, it's part in Hebrew and part in English. So, oh, yeah. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Awesome. The Alberta Podcast Network, powered by ATB, is happy to be partnering with Seat Giant to offer you a deal on tickets to major sporting events, big concerts, popular theater throughout North America, and more. Whether you're at home or on vacation, check Seat Giant for tickets to the hottest events, just like Oilers Games and Book of Mormon. Visit SeatGiant.ca to find tickets. Use the promo code APN at checkout to get 5% off your purchase. You'll save a bit, and the network gets a little cut of that purchase, too. All tickets are in Canadian dollars, even for events that are in the U.S. Seat Giant is Canadian-owned and operated, and it guarantees every ticket. So help yourself to a great experience while helping the Alberta Podcast Network and a Canadian-owned business. Visit SeatGiant.ca and use the offer code APN. You guys are familiar with the uh, the Vulcan salute? Yeah. To, mm-hmm. Okay. You Very guys know what I'm so. talking about? Just but without without even saying it, you guys oh, know what oh, I'm talking only about? Only certain people can do it, not everybody. Oh, we'll, we'll get to that. Oops. Oh, look at that. 
I'm going to start us off Cheers. here, but do you, you're, you're familiar with what I'm talking about here, the, the, the Vulcan salute, Paula. Oh, yeah. Like, okay, so... Live long and prosper. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll read this first a little bit, and then I've got some stuff written here, but I might just let you go ahead and just explain this. Sure. I, this is like a Wikipedia copy-paste thing, but the original Star Trek series, uh, there's so much to take away from it, uh, but one of, if not the most iconic aspect of this is that that is still in wide use today is the Vulcan gesture of live long and prosper. This hand signal became an instant hit with fans of the show and has become a staple of the franchise far beyond the original series, right up to the new series, in fact, because I guess there's a new Spock yep. in Discovery. So Spoilers. Yeah. Come okay, on, sorry. Well, I haven't, I haven't seen it. I guess there's a new... Yeah, come on. I don't think it's a spoiler to say there's a Spock in a Star Trek series, but there's, there's a Spock. Well, you ruined it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so there was one time when this whole thing came about, I was on Facebook and uh, I was doing something and... Paula had put up a picture of, I think it was a, a cemetery. Yeah, it would have been uh, probably one of the the headstones in the in the Jewish cemetery. Okay, and like all around the outside was like the Vulcan hand salute. Right at, at the top of the at the top of the headstone was yeah you, it was the image of of hands in that V formation like we're we're talking about. Yeah, and I was like, oh, man, I knew Leonard Nimoy was Jewish, but I was like, this clearly goes. And again, I'm not trying to. This sounds ridiculous, but this goes beyond Star Trek. Like, it's oh like, yes, like uh, I had no idea. It, it goes goes back a long time before yeah. Star Trek. So, <laughs> what um, where this comes from is the priestly blessing, which is found in the. This is in the Bible. It's Numbers six twenty two to twenty seven. That basically reads, "May the Lord bless and guard you. Uh, may He make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you and lift up and He lift up His face unto you and give you peace." Um, and that particular prayer is given in a synagogue by someone called a Kohen. Uh, that's traditionally a male who is born into a line of Kohanim. Of, so if you're a Kohen, it means your father was a Kohen, your grandfather was a Kohen. Right. And it's um, and part of that prayer is when you give it, it's both hands uh, with the prayer shawl in that formation with the prayer shawl that. Jewish men wear the talit pulled over the head and the hands so nobody can actually see it. So Leonard Nimoy, um, as you've cor- cor- correctly pointed out, um, he grew up in a traditional Jewish home. And one time when he was in the synagogue, he actually peeked under the prayer shawl of the Kohen in the synagogue. And he saw <laughs> the Kohen's hands making that V formation. And it intrigued him so much that he adapted it for the Spock character for the Vulcan greeting. Um, although in Spock's case, he only uses the one hand. So it's a two hand, it's a two hand salute. Basically, yeah. yeah. Or th- the salute's not the w- word, but <laughs> but yeah, okay. Uh, that's very very cool. And so he, you're not supposed to look at the at the Cohen when, when the Cohen when the Cohen is giving um, that prayer and making the symbol. He has the prayer shawl pulled over him in a way that you can't see what he's doing. You can hear him reciting the prayer, um, but like you under, don't see the gesture. But under, he's covered by oh. the prayer shawl. So were they mad when Spock blew, like, speaking of spoilers, <laughs> here's our secret hand thing that we do. Now you see yeah. it. I honestly don't know. I've never heard anything negative about it. In fact, you know, it's it's used like we are using discussing today it's it's used as a teachable moment right for the for these kind of things so um you know i think it's a good thing yeah i have a I, not many but a few friends that are like uh that i know are, are jewish and they're like actually i'd never seen this thing before and i didn't know about it like and i was commenting on this and uh my friend ari was like i i've, I've never seen this and i'm like well it's a jewish thing man like you're supposed to know about it and he's like He's like, I never saw it. I don't know. <laughs> and I'm like, you're supposed to know. Well, but now, this. but it makes sense now because if you're not supposed to look, yeah, like that if, makes if a lot your of friend, sense. If you're, even if your friend grew up going to synagogue, um, he may not have seen that because the prayer shawl would have been pulled up, and yeah, he'd only uh, know about that the same way that the rest of us know about it, and that's by doing research <laughs> online, Wikipedia. That, it's a wonderful <laughs> thing. Yeah, that is so funny. So uh, what I have here was that it was said that uh, if you put your if you put the hands together, so you're making like you got your two salute uh, the 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 gesture symbol, the gesture thank you that's the right word yeah and you're making a letter like when you put your thumbs together is that kind of what you're it said it makes the Hebrew letter shin mm-hmm. and it's used to encourage strengthen and fulfill mm-hmm. the 
congregation. And I was like, okay, cool. I, I don't know about the letter Shin, but... It looks kind of like a W, I think. A W, if yeah. If that's what I'm thinking of. Okay, yeah. yeah. Well, that would make sense, right? Like a, like a, yeah, with a W with like, almost like two W's kind of put together. A double W. A double W. A double yeah. W. Yeah. I thought that was Wu-Tang. <laughs> That's so, a different thing. Yeah. The bees yeah. are going to storm. This is a shin. That's a shin. Oh, that's... So it is, yeah. Totally looks... Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I can see that. Thank you, Johnny. Well, and we'll put that in the episode description. Then people can see what we're talking about here. Now, a number of fans, actors, fellow castmates, and even people playing Vulcans in the franchise have had a hard time making the symbol. Uh, in fact... It the, takes practice. It, it takes... Yeah. And some people are like, oh, I can't even... I don't know what's going to happen here. But there are, there are rumors that Zachary Quinto, who played Spock in the uh, in the J.J. Abrams Star Trek movies, he had to have his fingers glued together for Super scenes. Super glued together. Yeah. And he's really, he's really like defensive about this. Like He's like, no, I don't. That's just a rumor. And then people will ask him. And they're like, well, why don't you do it right now? And he's like, I can't. And he'll just keep just his hands. <laughs> he won't do it. Yeah. I can't. I just don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, okay. You can't force me to do this. Yeah. So. Uh, this is it a playground? <laughs> now. What we have here is that I, uh, I'm a big fan of uh, of Star Trek, and one of the no. things that's always we, we've talked about Star Trek to ad nauseum. We had a moratorium briefly on Star Trek, but oh man, now, now we, we have, have a moratorium, moratorium yeah, on yeah, moratorium. We have here, a moratorium on moratorium. It's been so. a while. Um, so can we all make the? Uh, there we go. See, yeah. Now and we've got. Have, are you guys familiar with the Sci Five? It's, it's like a high five, but you're <laughs> like this would be a sci ten. So it's like kablam! Here we go. Just Greg hit me yeah. with the sci yeah. five. This is amazing. I'm learning oh, something yeah. new. This is, this is yeah. a sci five. Yeah, just yeah. up high. Cool. There we go. Yeah, right there on. we go. That's the sci five. Have you ever have you ever done the uh, Ninja Turtle handshake? I haven't. Oh, what are we doing here? <laughs> oh, okay. That's I what don't I, know if actually. Like. That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> but before Star before Star Trek, this was just a Ninja Turtle hands, man. Yeah. Well, three fingers. Yeah. I'm not sure if I like this. That's where I got my practice. Yeah, the Ninja Turtle thing with grabbing someone else's fingers like that. That's uh, that's When you've only got three fingers. I suppose so. Does it disturb you? That is a little little disturbing. (laughs) That is really cool. How old would you say that 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 gesture is then in terms of... 3000 BC. 3000 BC. Oh, wow. Which would make sense because that's whenever, yeah. (laughs) Wow. 3000 BC. Okay, there we go. That's a first. Some good times. That's going way back. Fire up the Wayback Machine. That's really cool. Yeah, thanks for thanks for sharing that with us. No and then, problem. Yeah, how great is Leonard Nimoy? My uh, oh, he's the best. Yeah, he was the best. Yeah, oh, my uh, my mom shared with me one time how attractive she found uh, both Cat Stevens and Leonard Nimoy, and I'm just like, <laughs> okay, mom, like. Thanks for telling me that, but I can yeah. see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, get it. I, get I don't it. think anyone wants to know that about their mothers. No, and that's, <laughs> yeah. that was my feeling on it too. I'm like, oh, he's yeah. so handsome. This episode is brought to you by Park Power, a provider of electricity and natural gas in Alberta that offers low rates, awesome service, and profit sharing with local charities. Park Power is owned by Chris Kazoski, who has a growing and well-deserved reputation for being a guy who cares. If you're in the Edmonton area, you may have seen him around town in his signature bow tie, supporting local causes and boosting local businesses. He walks the talk with his businesses. It's why Park Power shares 10% of its profits with local charities. Current community partners include the Boys and Girls Club of Strathcona County, the Altview Foundation for Gender Variant and Sexual Minorities, the Festival Place Cultural Arts Foundation, Muscular Dystrophy Canada, the Canadian Parks and Wilderness Society, Society and the Saffron Center, which supports those affected by sexual violence. When you sign up, you get to choose which partner gets to share in the profits. Learn more at parkpower.ca. Park Power! Uh, today we're talking about golems. Not Gollum from the Lord of the Rings, but Golem of Jewish folklore. <laughs> A golem is a clay creature that has magically been brought to life. The name comes from the Hebrew word golem, which means something incomplete or unfinished. The oldest stories of golems date to early Judaism in the Talmud. Adam was initially created as a golem when his dust was kneaded into a shapeless husk. Like Adam, all golems are created from mud by those close to divinity, but no anthropogenic golem is fully human. Early on, the main disability of the golem was its inability to speak. The golem assumes its present connotation in the Middle Ages, when many legends arose of wise men who could bring effigies to life by means of a charm or a combination of letters forming a sacred word or one of the names of God. The letters, written on paper, were placed in the golem's mouth or affixed to his head. 
the letters removed deanimated the golem. In early golem tales, the golem was usually a perfect servant, his only fault being t a too literal or mechanical fulfillment of his master's orders. In the 16th century, the golem acquired the character of protector of the Jewish people in time of persecution, but also had a frightening aspect. The most famous tale involves the golem, created by the 16th century rabbi Judah Lo Benz Bezulel of Prague. It was the basis of Gustav Merenck's novel Der Golem in 1915, and for a classic of German silent films, 1920, which provided many details on the movement and behavior of a man-made monsters that were later adopted into the popular American horror films on the Frankenstein theme. I didn't realize that. Hmm. Good to know. Boom. So the golem was the first. <clears throat> Frankie. Frankenstein's monster. Eh, oh, uh, beep. He was not a robot. No, he was not. <laughs> eh, oh, uh, uh, does not compute. Now I am a truck. Ooh. Yeah. Like a genie That's kind of the kind commonality of between all the golem stories. Like it's for protection or yeah. it's for something really good. And something goes horribly, horribly wrong. Right. And then it's... He's it doing what you told him to do. So no. this can be used, I guess, like as a metaphor mm -hmm. to various aspects of life, of course. So. <coughs> okay. Like misguided, but it's yeah. not like it's not like attacking the villagers or anything like that. It's not that kind of I have heard just anecdotally stories where, yeah, like somehow the golem became destructive towards that which it was supposed to protect or preserve. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. That's kind of like a flawed, tragic <coughs> tragic hero sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. He's we, trying his best. It was just yeah. way too literal. That's Why are you going to be so literal? <laughs> and we have ourselves a nice little, uh, nice little snack coming up. Na, 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 snack time. I didn't want to say too much about this because I couldn't even actually pronounce the word properly. Like when I when I went into the bakery to get it, I tried to say it, and the lady actually stopped me. She's like, "Nope, nope, I'll get it." It's like she's... <laughs> you set off the non-Jewish alarm yeah. <laughs> there. <laughs> I think so. There's have a that, Gentile yeah. in the bakery. <laughs> <laughs> Bring the product to the front now. So. Oh. <laughs> but it was, it was ve she was very, very friendly. It was oh, yeah. very for, nice. for sure, for sure. Yeah, I'm familiar with the bakery of which you are speaking. And uh, um, yeah, definitely great people there. I'm afraid to ask what we're having because I might ruin it. So what are we what are we going to try here? And so we're going to try Sufganyot, which is deep fried jelly donuts. Oh. That are Booyah. basically also known uh, commonly as Bismarck's. But like I said, uh, oily foods are deep fried food, greasy foods, very traditional for Hanukkah. So um, I hope you enjoy. Oh, yeah. I'm excited. Well, this is going to be a fair bit better than uh, a lot of the snack times where Andrew <laughs> tries to poison us. I... Uh, That's very unfortunate. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. Supposed to be it's friends, such an unpleasant but, experience yeah. usually, but I think you'll be impressed Good, with this excellent. one a little I'm, bit I'm, more so. I mean, they look great already. Yeah. And these came from uh, Bliss Bakery, which yeah. is a wonderful, wonderful uh, bakery in the West End that sells kosher products. So this is something, this is a very traditional food that, that Jewish families would eat. At definitely, definitely yeah. for dessert. Or oh. be right up in your face here. The um, is this something that like is it a specific day or it's like just eight days in just a row? Eight just... It's just eight days of, oh. of oil gluttony. That's beautiful. Yeah. That sounds pretty. That's delightful. what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. That, that... If you need any blood work to have your cholesterol checked or anything, <laughs> do it it's not week. the time to do it. Yeah. This looks fantastic. And is there something that we would say or anything like that? Like like a like do families be like. Uh, uh, there wouldn't be any specific. There wouldn't be a specific blessing necessarily for a yeah. They would just go ahead and, and dig in. Not for the donut? Yeah. Oh! Mm. Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. The raspberry is my favorite, oh, for Oh, man, sure. that's awesome. More snack times like this, please. I mm -hmm. didn't realize we've actually got two kinds here. So there's the raspberry, and then there's the other kind, whatever the other kind is. And she said it, and I went to repeat it, and she stopped me again. Custard? I, I think it was custard, but it was what? A, there's a fancy traditional oh, okay. word for it. Well, I and grabbed I a like, raspberry one. You grabbed a mm -hmm. raspberry? There you go. Pretty good. Some more riveting comment. Now we're content talking. of I just us eating on the mic again. <laughs> oh man, that is so good. Oh yeah. Like that's just a straight up. I feel like I could go fight some crime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> stop a robbery. So give you a sugar boost. Stop, after a, your, stop uh, a robbery. <laughs> yeah. 
And this is totally vegan, so there's no... Um, some, I don't That's know if these lot. ones are vegan, but a lot of uh, the donuts at Bliss Bakery are vegan. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't have any dairy in it, for sure. Because everything at Bliss Bakery is what's called parav. It doesn't have dairy in it, because um, one of our dietary laws is that we don't mix meat and dairy products. So if something doesn't have dairy in it, then it's okay to eat with or right after having a, a meat dish. Okay. Yeah, there was... There's a big sign up there that was like, uh, "These are kosher," and uh, and I was I, I've never known what is and is not kosher. Like mm-hmm. I know I know there's like a, a procedure, mm-hmm. but uh, so desserts are usually uh, dairy free, or is that um, no d- desserts don't have to be dairy free, but if they do have dairy in them, then there would be you couldn't eat it right after eating a steak, for example. Okay, um, it, it's a kosher facility. Ba- bakery basically means it's under rabbinic supervision. And that all of the products that are being used to create the food are, are kosher, certified as kosher. Well, that was excellent. That yeah. Was, yeah. I got the raspberry one as well. I didn't get one of the custard. Did you get a custard one, Johnny? Mm-hmm. You did? Oh, okay. They were on that side of the box. So how do I say this again? Um, the- Souf genyot. Andrew, you're the jelly in my souf genyot. Did I say that right? Oh, <laughs> oh that's well, nice. Well, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. You're the custard in my... Uh, well, you can stop there. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys need a napkin? Yes, please. I got, I got jeans. You got, you got your pants on. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. I mean, if we're like, <laughs> but well, like, it's a good thing that this is a podcast and not actually us being videoed because there is no <laughs> graceful way to eat these. Really, That's right. no. Just get it in there. It's there's there's money to be made off that. Come on. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm a fan of this uh, uh, the fork approach, though. I think if I tried to bite into that. Like just, yeah. it would have been. It would have been excellent. Yeah, it would have been just the jam would have come out the other end. Like it would have done the. There would have been a jam explosion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. At least I think that's jam. Pocket jam. Oh. <laughs> just got a couple of a couple of hands full of pocket jam. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, that was a that was a really good time. Uh, you can listen to all of our episodes on itsconspiracypodcast.com. dot com. Find links to our social medias and our Patreon page, uh, patreon dot com slash it's a conspiracy. And hey, the holiday season is just around the corner. And there's nothing better than some sweet merch from the good people hey, at uh, oldmandesign.com. We'll get you sorted. Uh, thank you so much, Paula, for coming. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, this is this is really fun. Uh, we will be back with our Cinema Spiracy on December 19th. And then we will see you on January 1st for a look at three conspiracies of 2019, our beers thus far, and a little Q&A with charming Greg and gorgeous Charlie. Ooh, Ooh switch them up. Yeah. It's the old switcheroo. Uh, I like being charming. <laughs> <laughs> please do have a safe and happy holiday season. Uh, please do not drive under any influence. And uh, please feel free to check out the links in the episode description. There's going to be one in there that will uh, take you to the United Way if you would like to make a donation to a great cause. And that will help a lot of families in need at this time of year. So, yeah, go ahead and check do it out. It. Yeah. Do good stuff. What do we say for Hanukkah? I, uh, Hanukkah. Uh, Chag Sameach. <laughs> and that's used for a lot of different holidays. But yeah. So there's a Chag sound that's in a lot of Hebrew words. It's as though there is a hair caught in the back of your throat. <laughs> Uh, and you're trying to clear your throat from it. It's like, ha, 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 ha. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're getting it. You're getting it. Chag Sameach. Chag Sameach. Chag Sameach. But really there's, there's, there's a little thing at the end, right? Sameach. Chag Sameach. There is a chag A little bit, yeah. Not quite as, I don't think it's quite as pronounced as the initial ha ha on the ha. But yeah, Chag Sameach. And that's, that means happy holidays. All right. Woo! Cool, it's fun. Fascinating.